How's it going guys? Today we're going to find out what would happen if the NHL was actually going to the Olympics this year. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's upset about that, so we'll see here in this like alternate timeline who would have been the gold medal champion. So unfortunately I have to use the playoff mode to simulate this, and you can't do 12 teams, which is how many are in the Olympics. Uh, it's either 8 or 16, so we're going to go with 8, um, obviously, which means we're cutting out South Korea, who doesn't even have a team in this game anyway. Uh, Slovenia also doesn't have a team, and then Germany and Norway are both going to get cut out. They're like the 9 and 10 seed, I guess you could call them. So we're just going to have the top 8 teams basically starting off in the quarterfinals. Series length is single knockout, just like the Olympics. Uh, period length, obviously 20 minutes. And then in the Olympics, the overtime is actually 20 minutes, then a shootout. Unfortunately, that's not an option. So closest thing to that would be 5 minutes of 4 and 4, then a shootout. I feel like continuous OT, there's no shootout in that. And then the shootout, we don't get the period of overtime. So just have to go with that. Closest thing, unfortunately. Uh, difficulty, obviously, superstar, game style, full sim, which will hopefully give us the most authentic results. So, actually going to set up the bracket here, and then I'll start the simulation. So right here, guys, the quarterfinal bracket. I base this off the HF team ranking. So, Canada, obviously, is the number one ranked team. Slovakia is the lowest. Uh, then you have Russia, two. Switzerland, seven. Sweden, three. Czech, six. And then Finland, four. USA, five. So I figured uh, this is just the most fair way to do it. And then obviously, two minutes all done, I'll probably have to do like another game to find out the bronze medal winner. So for my early predictions here, guys, I think we're going to have Canada, USA, USA for one semi-final matchup and then Russia Sweden for the other with Canada and Sweden being the final uh, so a rematch of 2014 with Canada winning again so kind of an exact rematch of 2014 but we'll get to the simulation now and see what happens I'm actually going to show you guys both teams rosters as well as they have changed uh, quite a bit and you can see the team rating so Canada here 100 offense 100 defense 96 goaltending uh, Slovakia there 82 offense 82 D 86 goaltending and like I was saying I'm going to show you guys the rosters as well it's kind of just crazy I think to see um, what some of the teams look like now um, Canada obviously is as good as ever but Slovakia's actually lost some guys who have gotten older so right here is Team Canada that first line that might be like arguably the three best players in the world you got Stamkos, Crosby and Connor McDavid like an unreal first line. Uh, second line here, you got Shifley, Sagan, and Ben. So the two Dallas Stars with, you know, Shifley and Sagan, the rock, paper, scissor buddies. Uh, third line here, you got Giroux, Getzlav, and Tavares. And then fourth line there, you got Nathan McKinnon with Bergeron and Marchand. So basically the Bruins' top line with Pasternak subbed out for McKinnon. Uh, not too bad. Defense here, you got Burns and Doughty top pair. Petrangelo and Keith on the second. And then Subban and Weber on the third. Weber and Subban paired up, I think would be pretty funny. And then in goal here, you got Kerry Price as the starter with Brain Holpe backing him up. So that's a pretty insane lineup there for Canada. Here's a look at the Slovaks. So you got Halak starting in goal, Budai backing him up. Uh, first line there, you got Tatar, Bliznak, whoever that is, and Hosa, Panic, Marcinko, and Gabrik. Then you got Solaric, Yurko, and Dan on the third line. And then Sorovoy, Hervik, and Hudash Hudachek, I think, on the fourth. No idea to say those names. Their defense though is a bit better. Chara, Sakara, Triska, Marincin, Mikis, and Jersina. So obviously the Slovaks have the worst team, which is why they're matched up with Canada here in game one, uh, as Canada does have the best team. So just going to get back to simulation, and uh, we'll see what happens here. All right, so here we go, guys. Starting the simulation off, I'm just going to increase the sim speed to eight times, and I'll kind of see what happens here live. Um, I'm guessing, you know, like I said, big Canada win. Uh, probably going to be like... 4-1, maybe 5-1, something like that, but over halfway through the first period so far, and nothing's happened. And we're now going to the third period, 23 shots to 9 for Canada, and still nobody has scored. This is getting pretty hilarious. Um, I'm sure in the third period here, someone's going to put one in. Tatar on price, no way. Is this a huge early exit? Oh no, there we go, Tavares answered back. I was going to say, if Slovakia somehow beat Canada... Out getting outshot by like 20 shots. That would be ridiculous. But it does look like we're going to overtime, and we are. Okay, so here you go. Resuming the overtime, like I was saying, it's just a four minute uh, three on three, unfortunately. We can't do like the 20 minute period. And now we're going to a shootout. So this is going to be quite interesting. Let's watch this. And there you go, guys. First shot, Slovakia. Uh, they're going to miss that one. That one started like right away. Was not expecting it. Sagan here trying to put Canada up by one. Uh, on Halak there, nice stop. Okay, so both uh, teams throw the goal there. Hosa coming down. He's back from injury, I guess, in this. And Kerry Price shuts the door. So Candy here with a chance to take the lead. They got McDavid coming out. Crucial second shot. And Halak actually shuts the door. That is crazy. Third shot here for the Slovaks. You got Panic. And Price again. Big blocker save. That looked like it might have been going top shelf. Crosby here, potentially for the win. 
and he beats Halak, top left hand corner, Canada's moving on, that was a close one. Look at those shots there guys, Canada outshot them 38-15 to and had to win it in a shootout, that's insane. And next up guys we have the USA-Finland matchup, uh, USA there also has 100 offense just like Canada, 98D and 93 goal tending. I think they're the second highest rated national team, it's either them or Sweden. Uh, Finland though, still a solid team, 94 offense, 89 defense, and 92 goaltending. So, I mean, I feel like this could go either way. Um, the fact that the Slovaks took Canada to a shootout just shows, you know, anything could happen here in one game. So, I'm going to show you guys the lines, and then we'll start the simulation. Uh, US here obviously is stacked, got a bunch of new young players in the team. So, Goudreau, Matthews, and Kane on the first line, that's pretty sick. Phil Kessel, we're assuming he's going to make the team this year. He got snubbed last time, uh, playing there with Eichel and Wheeler. Then we got Patch Ready, Kessler, Pavelski. And on the fourth line there, you got the shootout master and Oshi uh, with Larkin and JVR. Defense here, you got Suter and Bufflin, Carlson and McDonough. Then a couple of Blue Jackets there and Wierenski and Jones. So uh, they should have some chemistry. And then in goal here, you got Schneider as a starter with Quick backing them up. So uh, USA is looking pretty good, I'd say. Uh, Finland here, they have Rask and Rene as their two starting goaltenders. I uh, have Rask starting just because he's a bit younger. Uh, offense here, very young. Ranton and Barkov and Line is their top line. No one over 22. Uh, Teravainen, Granlin, and Aho on the third, or sorry, second. Uh, Donskoy, Koivu, Komarov on the third, and then Pulyarvi, Filipula, and Hala there on the fourth. So, a pretty decent offense. Obviously, USA has a big advantage there. And then defense, they got Mata, Ristolainen, Vatnin, Lindell, Nunavera, and Honka. So, again, it's not too bad. It's better than the Slovaks, but USA's is much better. So, you know, USA should win, but. Let's see what happens. So right off the bat, guys, Barkov actually scored a goal. Wasn't even, like, ready for that one yet. Uh, so the Finns are up here, one nothing early on. They're actually controlling a lot, too. It looks like they're doubling in shots right now, or about double. It was, like, 11-5. Matthews, though, answers back with a goal there. So already a higher scoring game than the other one. 1-1 one, one here as the first period winds down. So there we go. Going to the second period now. Tie game. I figured this would be a close game. These are, like, the two closest seeds, the four and the five. Patrick Kane there gets one on Rast, though. USA is up two, and already Lina answers back, making it a 2-2 game. So yeah, two very close teams. Wheeler there scores one, now 3-2. This is looking like a very good game. Shots are quite equal as well. About halfway through now, and it's 3-2 for the Americans. Five minutes to go in the second period. Can Finland tie it up before the third period? Uh, and they do. Wow, Barca with another 3-3 here. Start of the third. This is a great game. Like I was saying, it's two closest teams, so you figure it's be the best matchup. Definitely one team's going to get snubbed here. Um, you know, moving on to the semifinals. Let's see who is going to make it out of the quarters, though. Halfway through the third, still nothing. 3-3. Do we have another overtime, potentially? 5-on-4 there for Finland. And we are going to overtime. So here we go. Only a four minutes, 3-on-3 three three overtime. Let's see if somebody comes away with it. And it's Pavelski there with the game winner. So USA is beating Finland. Moving on to semifinals to play Canada. That is going to be a great semifinal matchup. Next up here, though, we have Russia-Switzerland. So, I think, you know, Russia should get this one. I'll show you guys the team ratings here. As you can see there, Russia's also got 100 offense, just like Canada and America. 92D and 96 goaltending. And then Switzerland there, 84 offense, 86 defense, and 81 goaltending. So, we'll take a look at the lines here. I know Russia's offense is absolutely insane. Um, defense, though, it's pretty young, and their defense, like, could be better. You guys will hear, see here in a couple seconds. So... First line though, just like Candace's first line is absolutely stacked. I think this is like the second best line in the tournament. You got Ovi, Malkin, and Kucherov. Like that is just unreal. Second line here, you got Tarasenko, Kuznetsov, Panarin. Third line, we got some uh, old faces coming back. We got Ilya Kolvachuk and Pavel Datsyuk playing with Radulov. So kind of like a KHL line. Uh, Datsyuk's stats I actually made the exact same as they were in NHL 17. And even though he was an 88 in that game, with the exact stats as an 85 in NHL 18. So it kind of shows how they like reworked how the ratings add up but um, I figured that's pretty fair for him 39 years old and then Kovachuk here is an 84 I actually used the exact same stats as he was in NHL 14 and I took two off across the board as he is you know four years older now and he ended up in 84 so I think both those ratings are pretty fair hopefully you guys think so too uh, fourth line there you got Dadnov, Nisimov, and Nemesnikov so again just a crazy offense uh, D here, though, is definitely like their weak point. You got Orlov and Provorov on the top pair. Zaitsev and Sergeyev on the second pair, and then Zadarov and Emelin on the bottom pair. So many, like, Vs there in that D. Like, five of the six guys ending in a V. That was kind of tough to say. And then goalies here, you got Bobrovsky and Vasilevsky. So, two very good goaltenders again. Like, both teams, if they wanted to, like, use their backup or, you know, change during the game, uh, they'll be fine. 
totally forgot to show you guys Switzerland. So here we go, taking a look at Switzerland. Obviously, uh, pretty solid first line, Fiala, Hishir, and Niederreiter. After that, though, it's a bit weaker. You got Brunner there, Malgan, Andrado, uh, Suri, Allman, Meyer, and then Amble, Richard, Hollenstein. Never heard of those guys on the fourth. Uh, D here, you got Yossi and Weber, so the Predators uh, pairing. Mueller, Spies on the second, and then Blum and Diaz on the third. And then in goal for Switzerland, we have Hiller as a starter with Barra backing him up. So, again, I picked Russia to win. Russia really should win this, but you never know. So here we go, guys. Start of the game here. Uh, still 0-0. Russia is going on a power play, though. So, had a good chance to do something. Datanov, right after the power play, gets one there by Hiller. So, fourth line coming through. Uh, Richard, though, don't even know who that is. Scores one for Switzerland, so it's all tied up 1-1. Uh, like, looking at the two teams, I don't know how Russia loses this, but you never know. It's one game. Anything can happen and going into the second period. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say it's tied. It's actually 2-1 for Switzerland. Brunner there with a huge goal, five seconds left in the period. So uh, we're gonna keep simming here. I can't believe this one. Is Switzerland gonna play upset? And that would be crazy. Um, obviously, they're gonna have a tough road ahead of them though. They'd have to play probably Sweden to make it to that gold medal game. And that's if they can come out of this one. Ovechkin there, not going down without a fight. Kucherov gets another one. Now Russia's up 3-2. They were not having any of that, and Ovechkin gets another one, 4-2, to two, so looks like Switzerland's, you know, Cinderella story might be all over already after the second period, so we'll resume the third period here. Russia's got a pretty comfortable two-goal lead, out shooting Switzerland as well. Ovechkin, though, completes the hat trick against Switzerland, scoring one there late, making it 5-2, to two, and that is the final score. So, pretty exciting game there, honestly, I thought Switzerland had a chance, but apparently not, so... Next up here we have Sweden Czech, so this is also going to be a very close game, I think. Uh, they're the 3 and the 6 seed. We'll show you guys the ratings here. Sweden, 97 offense, 98 D, 93 goaltending. So their offense isn't as good as Canada, USA, Russia, but I do believe they have the highest rated D. Canada might also have a 98, so maybe tied for it uh, with 93 goaltending. And then the Czechs there, 93 offense, 86 defense, and 88 goaltending. So I'm uh, just going to show you guys the lineups here. Sweden's is actually looking a lot different. Uh, I was looking back at like, their 2014 lineup. So many veterans on that lineup who are no longer on the team. So, raise the forward group, guys. You got Forsberg, Backstrom, Arvidsson. Figured I'd uh, link uh, Forsberg, Arvidsson up there. Then you got Nylander, Raquel, and Landeskog. Steen, Zabinijad, Hornqvist. And then Silverberg, Zetterberg, and Wenberg. Uh, the Sedins could have been fourth line players, both 82s, but I figured Wenberg and Silverberg, younger, faster, makes more sense. Uh, so, Sedins, I think it's like the first time in a while they're not on the Olympic team. Uh, defense here, their defense is ridiculous. Hedman, Carlson, Klingberg, Ekman Larson, Lindholm, Strahlman. And like I was saying, I was looking at it. Somehow Jonathan Eriksson made the team four years ago. Just shows you. Sweden's defense has gotten a lot better. And then Ingle, of course, Lundqvist there. And then backing him up, Laner. So Sweden's team is uh, definitely going to be tough to beat. And looking at the checks here, though, they're pretty solid, too. Uh, Mrazek's the starter. Neuwirth backing him up. So two uh, pretty decent goalies. Neither are great, though. Uh, first line there, solid. Vorchek, Krejci, and Pasternak. Uh, Verbata, Hurdle, Palat on the second. Sabat, Cup Mechanics, and Frolik on the third. And then you got Yager there. The legend, of course, is going to have a spot on the team with Hansel and Zaka on the fourth. And then defense here, you got Ruda and Schuster, Gudas, Polak, and then Kepney and Roosevelt. So you kind of got like a lot of defensive D. All six are defensive. They're kind of bruisers. Not a lot of playmakers on D. So we'll see if that works for them or not uh, once we start the simulation. We're halfway through the first period, guys. Zabinijad just scored, and then Ruda answered back. As I was saying, how Zabinijad scored. Uh, Ruda ties it up. So 1-1 one, one already here. About five minutes left to go in the first period. Shots are actually quite equal as well. So uh, the Czechs are definitely hanging in there with the Swedes. Start of the second period now. I feel like the Swedes should be able to take away this one. One on the power play there though and no goals. Landis Cog though right after the power play. A lot of teams seem to score like right after the power play for whatever reason. So 2-1 here. And for Leak, as soon as I say that, ties it up. Makes it 2-2. Just under halfway through the game. So this is a good one so far. The Swedes do lead uh, slightly there in the shot total. Two minutes to go now in the second period. Looks like it's going to be a tie game going into the third. So here we go. Uh, Swedes are now up by 10 shots, though. Have a lot of pressure here. Still tied, though, about halfway through the third period. Um, another overtime. Oh, sorry. A power play for the Swedes, and Hedman gets one. Now a 3-2 game. Five minutes to go. Can the Czechs tie it up here? Force it to OT, but no. Klingberg there. Pretty much seals the deal. So big 4-2 win there for Sweden, moving on to the semifinals. So the four teams we thought would win did win. This is where it's going to get interesting. Will it be Canada the USA playing for gold, and then Russia or Sweden from the other side? Um, I am very interested to see here which team wins. This is going to be a great game. Classic here. Canada USA. 
here we go. I am I'm a little worried here. Obviously, I'm pulling for Canada myself, but uh, two very good teams. Shea Weber actually opens up the scoring there, makes it one nothing. About 10 minutes to go now, and then Patch Ready there answers back on his boy Carey Price. 1-1 one, one game here, and Stamco scores another. This might be a high-scoring game. These two teams are stacked. 2-1 now, still five minutes to go in the first period, and Stamco scores another. He is having a game. Jeez, okay. So 3-1 now for Canada. Going into the second period here, what is going to happen? Um, five minutes in, still 3-1. Tavares makes it 4-1. Canada is unloading right now on the USA. Halfway through the game, uh, USA is actually uh, beating them though in shots. So Canada is four goals on 17 shots. It's not looking good there for Schneider. I wonder if Quick comes in potentially for the US. Um, two minutes to go here, still 4-1. Goudreau gets one on Price actually, right before the end of the period. So start the third now, 4-2, still anyone's game, you know. Uh, Kessler, as I say that, makes it 4-3, he's pulling back within one. Kessler again, wow. Uh, we not expected uh, Ryan Kessler to be the hero there for the USA, but they were down three, somehow they pulled this thing back. Ten minutes to go here in the game. USA is out shooting Canada just slightly, it's a tie game. Is this thing going to go to OT? Two minutes to go. And we are going to OT, so here we go. 4-4, Canada, USA, and Bergeron, though, with the OT winner. Uh, and actually, Schneider was still in net. So USA will be playing for bronze. A very good game there, though. I can't believe uh, they came back in that one. Now we're going on to the Russia-Sweden game. Another, hopefully, very, very good game. So about five minutes in the first period right now. Uh, still 0-0. Shots are very close. I figured, you know, these teams match up pretty well. Russia's got the better offense. Sweden, the better defense. Both goaltenders, I think, are pretty equal. Tarasenko, though, scores one there on long fist. About five minutes left in the first. Uh, a couple more minutes to go here before we get into the second period. So, pretty low scoring game compared to the Canada-USA game. Malkin gets another one. Russia's offense. Sergeyev gets one. Russia's offense might just be too much here for Sweden. Um, about 10 minutes to go now. And Kovalchuk scores another. Honestly, I think in like the actual Olympics, Russia's for sure going to win. Datu, Kovalchuk, all those KHL stars. It's too much. Malkin scores one here. I feel bad for Lungfist. As you can see, Laner's now in net. And it's 5 nothing. You never know, though. The Swedes could have a miracle. Um, they need one period here to pull it off, though. Uh, Zetterberg's starting it off, so it's 5-1. Steen gets one there, about halfway through the third. So they need three goals in 10 minutes, or three goals in five minutes now. Probably not going to happen. I think Bobrovsky's just too good. Uh, they're actually out, -sweet out shooting the Russians now, but yeah, can't pull back the comeback. So big 5-2 win there for Russia. Gold medal game is going to be Canada versus Russia with the USA and Sweden playing for bronze. So here we go, Canada, Russia. I'm excited here. This is going to be huge. Let's see what happens. Obviously, I'm pulling for Canada, but this is going to be a very good game. So here we go. Increase the sim speed there by eight times. Um, what was it? 5-2 Russia beats Sweden. So I think this is going to be a 4-3 win for Canada. Start of the second now. Still 0-0. My 4-3 prediction might have been a little too high. Um, Canada there on the power play. And Sagan opens up the scoring. There we go. Ovechkin, though, answers back immediately. Malkin scores one. 2-1 now for the Russians. Okay. Um, halfway through the game, Canada's going to play uh, comeback now. Lots of time left. They actually are out shooting Russians still. Malkin Ovechkin actually basically scored back to back there, 30 seconds apart. And it's 2 1 here, start of the third period. Canada needs a hero. I'm thinking Crosser McDavid, but Kuznetsov scores another one. So they're down 3 1. I mean, we've, scored, we've seen a lot of goals scored in a period before, so they still have a chance here. They need two more. Malkin again. Are the Russians going to put Canada out of it? Five minutes to go. They need a miracle, like an absolute miracle. Jordan Everly miracle. And it's not going to happen. So there you go. Russia winning the gold medal. Like I was saying, I think that's what's actually going to happen without the NHL players. And then Canada there getting the silver. I could also see Canada getting silver this year. Um, they have a decent team even without the NHL players going. But I also want to show you guys the bronze medal game. Uh, simulate Sweden versus USA. But before that, I want to show you guys the stats for the tournament. Uh, unfortunately, this will be lost when we do the bronze medal game. So, Ovi here, 7 points in 3 games. He killed it. Kucherov, 6-3. and three. Malkin, 4-3. and three. So, I mean, that top line for the Russians just carried them. Tavares had a pretty good tournament there. Same with Hedman. Uh, Kuznetsov, Provorov, all putting up 4 points. Barkov actually had 3 points in Finland's 1 game. Same with Line. So, that top line was trying to carry. Unfortunately, could not get by the Americans. And then a bunch of guys there, obviously, with two points. And next year, guys, I figured I'd show you the goalie. So, obviously, Bobrovsky there went 3-0. and 0, .943 save percentage, 1.67 against. Price there could have had better numbers, honestly. Like, less than a .9 save percentage. Lungfist, 2. 
numbers weren't great. But I mean, both those guys ran to the Russians, so maybe that's why. Schneider, yeah, that's tough for the Americans. Halak, though, went god mode against Canada. Like, look at those numbers. That's ridiculous. That's how the Slovaks almost upset them. Rask could have been better. Same with Hiller. Like, all these goalies, actually. Quickly, guys, I forgot to show you a couple of the popular teams. So, Canada here. Uh, Stamco, Sagan, Giroud, McDavid all had two points. So right there, you can see all the guys with one point. Uh, Finland here, Barkov, Line, and that's it. Ranton had one. Uh, Sweden, Hedman, Klingberg, Zetterberg, Nylander, Raquel. Zetterberg was on the fourth line, so I put up two points. And then USA here, just a bunch of guys there with two and some guys with one. So, like I was saying, we'll go to the bronze game now and uh, see who's taking it. So, here we go, guys. USA versus Sweden for the bronze medal. Um, one of these teams is going to probably be happier than Canada, even though they finished slightly lower never you know fun losing and getting silver Patrick Kane there first to score Matthews right after so a couple of goals there Lundqvist hasn't looked too good here in these Olympics I'm not gonna lie 2 nothing already for the Americans about five minutes to go in the first period so so the second period now we'll see if uh, Sweden can make this comeback happen I know they were down like what three against or five to the Russians they made it three patch ready though gets another one like I was saying Lundqvist is just I don't know showing his age maybe Five minutes to go here. Sweden, I don't think, is going to come back. Looks like, oh, Zvinijad, maybe I spoke too soon. Two and a half minutes. Can they rally back? Unfortunately, yeah, for the Swedes, no, they can't. So there you go. Uh, USA is your bronze medal winner. So Russia gold, Canada silver, USA bronze. I could definitely see that happening if NHL players went. Um, even without NHL players going, I could definitely see that happening uh, this year. Time will tell. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that simulation. I thought that was pretty cool uh, to see how it played out. If you did enjoy it, leave that thumbs up. Also, guys, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.